Today, we're joined by the queen of YouTube, <laughs> affiliate entrepreneur, YouTube growth expert, Marissa Romero. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> yeah, it's my it's my pleasure. I've been watching on YouTube for the last couple of years, and I absolutely love what you do there. It's absolutely incredible. So I'm ex excited to uh, share your expertise and your knowledge. So I want to start at the very beginning. Why in the world did you get started on YouTube? So this happened, it all started around April 2018 is when I I started going hard on a, on a YouTube channel. It happened because... I was in a desperate situation, actually. Um, I had previously done e-commerce, you know, Shopify stores, drop shipping, and I closed down that business model, sold my stores, and and I I was like, okay, I don't I don't want to do this. I was getting burnt out. I saw the direction that Facebook ads were going; they're really expensive, mm. and so I was like, I just quit. <laughs> and at that moment, I was going. I was I had moved to Thailand. And I was like, well, there's no revenue coming in. I was trying a bunch of ways to make money. And YouTube um, happened because I saw the opportunity to, to monetize the organic traffic. And, and the people in my niche that were on there, I was like, man, you know, they, they're just sharing their skills and sharing their knowledge and giving value and growing an audience. I was like, I could do that. No problem. And so I, I had to do it because, you know, the, you know, if not, the bills weren't going to get paid. Um, the credit card debt was stacking up like crazy. It was just a, a scary situation for me. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, one of those entrepreneur rock bottoms. I was like, I need to make something happen now. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think it's really smart that you were able to pivot. You realized that you were going in a direction that wasn't going to work. And then you saw that opportunity with YouTube, which is, which is amazing. And I really want to get into some of the nuts and bolts of how YouTube operates and how you've structured your business, which allows you to be remote, be all over the place, which is absolutely really cool. And I think the key here is, and I want to just send this out to all the after hours entrepreneurs out there. What is the key to having a successful business on YouTube? What What do you think has separated you? Because now you're at over 125,000 followers uh, on YouTube. What's the key? Consistency. Mm. Consistency. After you, that the key is getting started. Really, that's the true key. Um, because a lot of people don't because of imposter syndrome, because of not having the fancy equipment, because of so many things. Um, but the key after you start is to treat it truly like a business, like you started a coffee shop, you know? Mm. You can't start a coffee shop and then just not go to the coffee shop and not show up. You just can't. It's the same thing with a YouTube channel. It's a different type of, of way to give content on the internet. Um, it's hard, it's challenging, but by far it's the most rewarding, in my opinion, than, than um, the other social media platforms. Yeah. I. I levied out this question to a bunch of people the other day. And I said, what, if you could only have one social media app on your phone, what would you have? And I'm with you. It would be, it would be YouTube for sure. Uh, it's just, it's such a powerful way of connecting and engaging and, and spreading a message, uh, an area of expertise. Um, and I think that's the key, right? That was the key for you. You, you had the knowledge, you had the expertise mm -hmm. on, on how to create these uh, streams of income. So I'm just going to create videos around them. Right. Yeah, exactly. How important or how difficult was you was it for you, Marissa, to put the framework in place, put to put your business strategy in place? Was that difficult for you, or did you just kind of wing it? What was that like? I was definitely winging it. <laughs> to be honest, in the beginning, in the beginning, I I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I did, but it was very just go. You know, mm. for me, it was it was doing something every single day. Um, for the first 90 days, as a matter of fact, I was posting every day. If I missed a day, I'd try to double up some days I, I would miss, but it would, for me, it was like, I, I knew that the algorithm loves, um, posting frequency. And so I was willing to, to do what it took to start really ramping up that traffic because I had no money for paid ads. I had no money for, um, for anything. It was just like, I, and I remember making that first sale organically. It was my, it was a $33 and 50 cent sale. I was like, hell yeah. I was like, <laughs> this works. I was like, um, I know my, this link was only on my YouTube channel. So I know that this sale came from my YouTube traffic. That's awesome. So, yeah. And I just started with, um, affiliate marketing and I didn't have a product. 
I, I didn't offer coaching. I didn't have anything. I was just promoting other people's uh, other business tools and other people's products at the time. Okay, cool. And I, so I love that. So you're, you're going in, you say, okay, I'm just going to do this every day. I'm going to be consistent. That's the key consistency, right? And then you get this $30 sale. That's your, I guess that's your aha moment. Like, yeah, <laughs> this, this works, this works. So I want to talk a little bit more about affiliate marketing. I, I think that a lot of people understand it from a conceptual standpoint, but lay it, lay it down for us here real quick, Marissa. What is affiliate marketing and why is that an important component of YouTube success? So affiliate marketing is when you um, promote a product or service through an affiliate link, because we're talking about online affiliate marketing. You promote that link, someone uses that link to buy the product and you get the commission because you connected the buyer to the seller. That's in the simplest form, it's referral marketing. Um, it's It's been around forever. And I think that every single business um, should be doing some type of affiliate marketing to to supplement their income and create more income streams because they add up, they add up for sure over time. And they can, you know, if you focus on residual uh, commissions, it could really add up over time and, and be reliable and be passive, automated, all those things. So well, it's great because you have no inventory. It's, it's right. infinitely scalable as long as people are just clicking a link, right? It's, exactly. That's the beauty. And I think that's probably one of the, the reasons why a lot of people are apprehensive on about getting on YouTube because they're probably saying to themselves, I don't, it's going to cost too much time. It's going to cost too much money. But if you structure it properly, like you teach in your subscribers to sales course, if you, mm -hmm. if you, if you set it up properly, it can actually have the opposite effect. It actually be a significant, substantial source of income, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And as far as structure, I realized a few months in, I was like, okay, I need funnels, right? I need funnels to funnel people to these affiliate products. And so it's a different way to, to create a funnel when you're promoting an affiliate product, but it's pretty <clears throat> easy to do it. And so that like, once I started to create my list, that that was a, a game changer and I, I no matter what you're promoting on youtube from day one whether you're whether you have your product or not just start growing your list for sure yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah start start growing your email list because that's something that you own i, I want to dig in a little bit more marissa into this idea of a funnel because when i think of youtube it's basically just someone happening to fall across a video right but mm -hmm. is there more to it than that what do you mean what's like your top of funnel for your youtube channel so when you think about a, a funnel, it's we see it everywhere. Um, but, but before there was online funnels, there's well, there's still McDonald's, like the drive-through. The drive-through is the top of the McDonald's sales funnel. Well, actually, a billboard is the top of a funnel for you know McDonald's. When you right. see that billboard and they're like exit in a mile um, for for this McDonald's, that's the top. And then when you're going through the drive-through. Um, you're, you've gone, you started going through a buying process and that's the same thing with sales funnels, like, you know, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all of these places where you have a social media presence, that's the top of your funnel. Mm -hmm. And so what makes you, it's, I say like a YouTube channel is like a sales funnel on crack because it's a different mindset that people have when they're on YouTube, what they're looking to do is they're looking to solve a problem a lot of them are looking at YouTube to make a purchasing decision, a lot of people. And so mm -hmm. when they see your video that helps them solve a problem, it's like an automatic trust uh, is developed with that person and they, they want to know more about you and they want to get on your list and they want to buy from you. And so that's why as long as you know, like in your videos, how to give a proper call to action to the links in your description, it's very, very powerful. And I'm, and I'm assuming that you're leveraging the power of the search engine on YouTube, right? Someone says, I want to, what's the best type of bean for my soup? They go to, they go to YouTube, they type mm -hmm. it in and your face shows up recommending the bean. They click the link, they buy it, and then you get paid, right? That's yeah, ba basically how that, how that works, right? Um, exactly. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, just in your case, Marissa, and again, everyone might vary on this. 
how are you getting people to your YouTube channel or how were you getting people to your YouTube channel when you were small? You know, now you're, you're large and people are actually going to be seeing you all over the place. But when you were a small channel, how are you actually getting people to come find you? Mm -hmm. Um, so I leveraged the small audience I did have on Facebook and, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. I, I leveraged family and friends, to be honest. I was just like, Hey, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> um, and once I did that, you know, I would do that. And honestly, would just leverage keyword research hard. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really the fastest way to get your your first thousand subscribers is is really being careful about you know good video titles like making sure the keywords are very good in your in your video title but there's a lot of people that have um, email lists and there's a lot of people that are familiar with like Reddit and Quora and all these other platforms where you know you can lead people from those other platforms to to your channel and so um i i just i just was <laughs> i was going hard that first thousand subs i i just told everybody to, to go to the channel and so another thing too is you have once once you start youtube and you have videos up on your channel you have to tell people to keep watching the next video yeah um and so that that was you know that was my strategy but now it's like when when your channel gets bigger you in the beginning as a smaller channel you focus on keyword search but as you grow you you then try to focus on getting suggested traffic because mm -hmm. once you do that and once you uh, focus on suggested traffic and also browsed which means people see your channel from the home page it's game over because then youtube is promoting you at no extra effort on your part yeah, I, I've actually had some magic happen in, in my case. And, and like you said, I just want to reiterate this. It's about doing the small things right up front, right? The titles, mm -hmm. the keywords, the thumbnails, doing all these little things right. And they start to pay off. I've been on YouTube for, I don't know, about a year and a half, two years now. And just now, just about a month ago or so, I have a video that's now been shown by YouTube over 100,000 times. And it's mm -hmm. it was it's just absolutely mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. So to your points, consistency, doing the small things right, tell everybody <laughs> eventually you're going to hit eventually you're going to hit so yes. i want to lean a little bit more into this marissa you finally hit you're finally getting traffic people are seeing your videos what are the calls to action that we absolutely need to have in our youtube videos what are those calls to action wow what are the calls to action there's so there's so many options i guess but we have to be because you don't want to overload with calls to mm -hmm. action right so what what's your strategy when it comes to that so now my strategy is if I don't say any other call to action um, in the video, it's for sure to get on my list, to subscribe to my um, my list by downloading my subscribers to sales blueprints. That's my freebie, right? Because it's almost like you don't have to tell people to subscribe. People are going to do it if your video is good. Mm. Um, I never give a call to action in the beginning because it's a waste of time. I always tell people to to do what I want them to do um, towards the middle, maybe a little earlier than the middle, but I, I give them a chance to 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 want to stay, to want to um, to get to know me better. And then when they realize like, hey, you know, she's she's giving some some good advice here, then then they'll do it because it's my it's my highest. There's on YouTube, you have um, cards, which are the little white Yep. Um, notifications at the top that say suggested video or blah, blah, blah. Um, my highest converting card is when I tell people to download my, my freebie. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And it's probably because yeah. your freebie is very well targeted towards your audience uh, that mm -hmm. is, that is watching. Right. Um, so I'm going to talk about that, but before we get into that, uh, of course you can learn everything that Marissa is doing at the subscribers to sales blueprint, Marissa Romero.com. Listen, you type it into YouTube. You will find her very quickly and <laughs> easy because she is good at what she does. Um, but so let's, let's talk about how, how did you actually find the right lead magnet? Right? Because I'm, I'm a big believer in this too, Marissa, your email list is probably the lifeblood of your business, right? Mm -hmm. How did you develop a lead magnet that really worked? Did you have to go through several to get to the one that's really converting? How did you get there? Let's see with my lead magnets. I I knew I wanted to do an an ebook style um, lead magnet. I knew I wanted to make it uh, valuable for sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 
I think it's like 10 or 11 pages, but, um, but to be completely honest, I, I, you know, paid for a mastermind, which taught a lot about funnel types, having a webinar funnel and the best types of lead magnets to have. And so I, I constructed my lead magnet based on the mastermind that I was in um, to give away a very good piece of, of value. And it's not just you subscribe to my, my freebie and that's it. It's, it's a nurturing sequence. It's like, yeah. there's more value over, over the next days that I give out, you know, um, you know, just other types of worksheets and tools that realistically people can use. It's not just, you know, some dinky information. It's, it's, I really put a lot of thought into, into that whole lead magnet and the follow-up sequence that people are getting because it yeah, matters. I like that. And you, are you funneling a lot of people via that little, um, the little tag that pops up at the beginning or at the, the top of the YouTube video, is that a good actual traffic generator for the lead magnet there? Cause that's not something I've experimented with. Typically when I'm adding those, um, cards. Miss, the cards, right. Typically yeah. when I'm adding a card, it's just a, Hey, go check out this other video that's related to this video. Um, which actually I want to, I want to ask you about this, Marissa. This is, this mm -hmm. is interesting, right? I'm always conflicted to recommend someone leave the video that they're watching to go watch another video. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Right. Cause I want them to watch the whole thing. You yeah. Know? So when are you putting in your cards? I put them in. That's a good question. I, when I, I try to keep it towards the middle or the end. Like after the 40% viewed. Yeah. Point. Yeah, I, I do. Um, and I'll also leave them in the description, but I think, more so what I try to focus on is the end screen. To me, the end screen is very important too. Um, Cause there's two click through rates on your channel. There's the click through rate where people click and, and click on a thumbnail and decide to watch your video. Mm -hmm. But then there's another click through rate at the end of the end screen or at the end of your video where they decide to click through and watch the next video that's coming up, which is super important to your channel and getting more watch time on your channel. Um, I always, I never end my videos. I never like, Oh, thanks for watching. Bye. Hope you had a great, like never, you'll never see that. I just tell them just go watch more. If you like this, let's go and watch the next one. <laughs> see you there. I like That's that it. a lot. So at the end of your video, instead of saying, thanks for watching, see you later. You're saying, Hey, by the way, check out this video. It's going to really add value to your life. Something like mm -hmm. that. Right. Yep. That's, That's exactly that. right. I love that. I love that. And that's something, you know, that is, is pretty easy to do. You don't have to go through a lot of post-production stuff for that, right? You can just incorporate that into the actual recording of the video itself. Yep. You can. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Cool. So Marissa is here is laying out basically all the framework you need to have a successful mm -hmm. channel, to generate leads, to get cash, to get paid. We've talked a lot about affiliate marketing, but I want to go a little bit deeper into that topic. How are you finding the right places to send people? Obviously there's Amazon, which is kind of like the easy affiliate marketing funnel. Where else do you like for sending people and how can we find great affiliate leads? Um, let's see. I, I'm big on promoting tools and softwares because I think that's something that everybody uses and something that everybody needs. Yeah. So I'm really big on, on giving value on how to use a certain type of software um, and just having maybe uh, the key with affiliate marketing, if it's something you're trying to grow is to offer bonuses when, when people buy through you. So uh, for example, maybe there's a, I don't know, a workout app that, that you use and you like um, maybe a bonus that, that you give with that workout app is, is help with how to get started and your favorite features of the app and how to use it and stuff like that. So um, I think that that's a big key with affiliate marketing is, um, is just that as far as networks, you know, it, it just really depends on, on what niche you're in. Yeah. Um, because there, there's so many now, <laughs> uh, there's, there's health, health networks and obviously a ton of internet marketing, products that you can market out there. But I would say like the low hanging fruit in your business should be promoting like what it is you're already using. Yeah. No, I in, like that a lot. Life. Yeah. 
it comes off as more genuine too when you're actually mm -hmm. recommending a, a product or service that you use. Like VidIQ is something I like to promote because it's just right. It's, it's really changed my life in a lot of ways, and it's just really really helpful. Uh, for mm -hmm. optimization. So in addition to affiliate marketing, you know, I, I'm a big believer and I know you are in passive income, creating multiple streams of income, right? Because if you're relying on one stream of income and it goes dead, you're in big trouble, right? Yeah. If you're a restaurant owner selling bagels and all of a sudden COVID hits, you can't sell bagels anymore. <laughs> whew, whew, scary, scary stuff, scary stuff. Mm -hmm. So what are some other ways that we can create cash flow from our YouTube channel, Marissa? Yeah. So uh, the main the main ways are you know offering a service, right? If you're a coach or a consultant, um, it's very easy to just say, hey, like let's hop on a strategy call or something like that, and give a call to action for that. Um, course creation is huge. If mm -hmm. you can just offer, you know, or not offer, but pr produce a, a a video module type course with something that you know people ask you a lot and that you have to give, you know, you, that they see you as the ex expert and create a course around it and, and sell it because your knowledge is like the most profitable thing that you can sell. And the thing with course creation is that it's so scalable and it's, um, it's hard. It's hardly any cost to fulfill because it's like, if your profit is going up, but your expenses and fixed costs are going up. It's like, what's the point? If you're yeah. making a million dollars, but your expenses are over 900,000, it's like, well, what's the point <laughs> of even scaling this? So definitely course creation. Um, there's uh, Patreon. And that's the, that's the magic. I just want to uh, reiterate, that's the magic of YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to run you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in Facebook ads. You've already got the traffic through, through your YouTube channel, right? Right, right. Yeah, it, it's like... I, I for sure plan to now run paid advertising, but I've never spent a dime on, on, ad, on advertising yet. And so, because you have that, that base of traffic to just like keep you afloat, you know? Um, and you already and, have the no like, and trust. So it's just, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And other, other ways that I plan to monetize my channel is um, through my merch store. Mm -hmm. My my Teespring store. I want to I want to sell merch, um, and a lot of there's a lot of creators that have uh, like crowdfunding, like a Patreon account, where it's a subscription based um, product that you offer exclusive content or you know goodies behind the scenes, whatever, to an audience that subscribes to to your your content. So yeah, there there's there's so many so many creative ways to <laughs> to monetize the channel. Yeah, I love it. You're only hindered by your creativity. I, I think that's mm -hmm. that's really cool. I want to talk about your course creation a little bit, Marissa. So the course is subscribers to sales, essentially teaching people how to do exactly what we're talking about here. But getting look, you know, in 30 minutes, we can only touch the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Um, but what went into your course creation? Like on a scale from one to ten, how difficult was it? Tell us a little bit about your process from saying I want to create a course to I have a course. Tell us about that process. It was, it was, um, it took a while. It's something that I thought would be easier, but it's just, um, it was not. <laughs> well, because uh, as a YouTuber yourself, you've already got a lot of the skills that are needed to create video. Right, right. right. Um, it took, it took seven months, the process to, from beginning to end. And it was, it was a lot of um, just outlining the flow of of what you want to take your uh, your students through like a beginner right because um it's it's different for everybody because people are coming into your course sometimes at different stages some people are more ahead than others some people are just very beginner so it's like you have to include everything and uh, it's it's hard to to remember what it's like in the beginning when you're struggling with something. And yeah. so I think that was the, the most difficult part. But once you outline, you know, you, you script and I tell people when they're creating a course, like definitely section it out, like with, you know, numbers or, you know, A, B and C and modules and, and uh, lessons, because it's like a cur curriculum when you're in school you, you know, you have different chapters, you have different lessons. It's the same thing so that there's um, structure to your course. And then in the future, you can position it to, to add things, change things um, as you go. And so that was, um, it, it's, it's a lot of effort though, because you do have to film 
um, you have to edit, you have to, you know, for me, I like to pay attention to details. I create um, thumbnails for all my different video modules so that you know, like where exactly you are. Um, there's worksheets, there's guides, there's all, there's a lot of stuff. So it's, I mean, it all depends on like, as, as well, like the price point you're, you're selling at. Um, Cause mm. not all of that would, would have been necessary if I was selling it for a hundred dollars or yeah. 200. So well, yeah. you probably felt compelled to say, Hey, if you're going to spend the money, you're going to spend the time. I want to make sure you have an amazing experience when, when mm -hmm. you get into the course. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's an, I think it's an, a really easy trap to fall into. I, I kind of joke around with my wife about this. Um, before we bought our first house, she's watching these, you know, house buying shows on television. In 30 minutes, they find the house, they move in, they clean it up, and then it's beautiful, right? We bought our house. She's like, this is nothing like on <laughs> TV, right? It's, right. It's, it's just kind of amazing where, you know, everything takes longer than you initially expect. If you were to go back, Marissa, and you could do one thing differently with your course, is there anything that you would have said, I would do this a little bit differently from the get from the get go? What's a little takeaway we can we can take from that? Um that's interesting. I I hope this doesn't sound bad, but I, I don't think I would do anything different because I took so much time to really map it out and get behind mm -hmm. the head of my student. Of course, now like I'm redoing a lot of things just because of fee like feedback and suggestions and stuff that I have from the students. But um, I think that the most important thing is don't, don't rush it. You want to finish, you want to launch, but Hey, if you need to redo that, redo it. If you need to, um, to, to hire somebody to help you with, you know, creating the designs or creating different templates, templates or worksheets or tools for your students, like take the time to do that for right. sure. Love it. Did you, I'm curious, did you take a course on how to build the course or did you just say, I'm going to go all in, I'm going to dive in? Um, I didn't take a course on it. No, but, uh, but school, I, I uh -huh. school of YouTube. Did you go to the school of YouTube <laughs> to build it? Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the same way. I, I do. I basically do everything off of YouTube, but now I'm kind of in this point where I'm thinking like, you know, maybe it's worth spending that money up front to take the course so I can just skip all those potholes instead of like, you know, we could just absolutely speed up your process. I know when I built my podcast experience out for the first time, I could have done it in a quarter of the time if I would have had um, the right fundamentals. And of course, when you're learning from a pro like Melissa Romero, you're going to grow your YouTube channel way, way quicker as well. Wait, I'm telling you, listen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you. All right. Uh, cool. So Marissa, I want to go into the world famous rapid fire here before we get there, MarissaRomero.com, subscribers to sales, go check it out. I'll have a link below for you. Um, all right, cool. Marissa, you ready for the rapid fire here? You all strapped in? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. <laughs> cool. Uh, what is a must have item? every business owner should have that costs less than 50 bucks? Oh, a camera. Okay. Okay. Like a webcam you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Webcam for sure. I dig it. I dig it. Uh, what is a must have subscription that you're using right now? Kartra. Gotcha. Then that's where you are hosting your course, yeah. correct? It's, yeah. it's, um, it's all in one. So it does my, it does funnels, email marketing, um, all, all that stuff. Host the courses. Yeah. Cool. Dig it. Uh, if you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, what would you say? <laughs> Only 10? Yeah, 10 seconds. Um, gosh, I would say you don't need, you don't need to go the traditional route and just dive into the unknown. I like that. I like it. especially in in 2020 and beyond. You have to get comfortable with discomfort. You got to start trying oh, yeah. new things. It's 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 if you're if your plan is is just do the things that have always worked. It's it's a dangerous plan to have. So I'm with you there. <laughs> uh, if you were to wake up in the morning, you could only do one business task for the day, Marissa. What would you do? Go look at my asana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's, a, it's a fairly small YouTuber. I can relate to that because every day I check my YouTube, I got a subscriber, you know, it's, it's very exciting. Um, okay. Final question here for you, Marissa. If you had a billboard message that could reach millions and millions of people, what would you put on your billboard? Um, I would put my favorite quote. It's by Oprah. Well, Oprah slash Maya Angelou. It's, um, you don't know what your legacy is going to be because every day you, are building your legacy. Um, it's it's a 
almost exactly that, but it would, it would be about legacy because it's like, what's one big way right now to leave, leave your legacy. And that's with the lives you touch um, and the value you're, you're giving to people. I love that. I love that. Marissa said it and I agree with it. Marissa, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much.